Aren't you tired of your art feeling a little too polished and wish to give it that bold handcrafted touch? Do you ever feel disappointed that your color palette isn't vibrant enough? And let's be honest, don't you sometimes feel trapped in an endless void of self-doubt questioning why you pursued a career in art when every unfinished project feels like another letdown to yourself and those who believe in you? Well, I might have the solution to two of those problems. Introducing the El Malo DLC by Frankentoon Studios for Affinity Designer. This illustration kit aims to take your artwork to the most exotic barrios of Latin America, as it offers a range of dynamic and expressive vector-based brushes, enabling you to unleash your creativity and turn any rough sketch into a beautiful, handmade, colorful artwork. In this review, we'll dive into what makes this DLC stand out, explore its features, and see if it really delivers on its promise to bring bold, raw handcrafted charms to your designs. Whether you're a seasoned Affinity Pro user or just starting out, this might be exactly what you've been looking for. This DLC was created by Enrique Figueroa, better known online as Frankentune, and El Salvador based artist and longtime Affinity collaborator since 2016. Frankentune's energetic color choices, masterful use of shapes, and attitude filled characters have captivated me ever since I first encountered his work in the Affinity tutorial Toxic Land, creating characters with Frankentune on April 25, 2018. That article wasn't just a guide, it was an invitation to create lively cartoon characters and expressive worlds using the Affinity Suite. Unfortunately, I did not take the invitation at the time. Instead, I stuck with my tumultuous relationship with the Adobe Suite, despite already owning most of the Affinity software. Add in endless hours of schoolwork and far too many hours playing Fallout New Vegas in my aspiration to create like Frankentune slowly faded away. Fast forward to July 2023, after a long hiatus from drawing and using Affinity, I stumbled upon the El Malo illustration kit. It felt like a full circle moment, as the Frankentune had distilled all the vibrancy, energy, and handcrafted charm that first captivated me into one cohesive DLC. Naturally, I couldn't wait to dive back into Affinity, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but this DLC did not disappoint. Whether you're an illustrator seeking rough textures with an expressive pigment, or a designer wanting to swap sterile digital aesthetics for something bolder and full of personality, this kid has you covered. Now, on to the main question. For $24, this massive DLC includes a whopping 130 vector brushes, 42 colored textures, 2 color palettes, and 1 video tutorial, which you can find on YouTube but don't tell anyone. One PDF file that serves as a guide for all the affinity brushes and texture styles. And four stunning illustrations created by Frankentune Studios, all made using the tools from this illustration kit. Upon a closer look, the 130 vector brushes in this kit are organized into five distinct categories. First, you have 32 engraving brushes, perfect for adding multiple rough lines with a single stroke. 34 hatching brushes, ideal for creating cross hatching effect and adding depth. 22 liner brushes, great for rough, single and precise lines, whether for outlines or for details. Then you have 24 stipple and shade brushes, perfect for adding subtle shading and texture through dot and line patterns. And then you have 18 weight line brushes, designed to provide variable line thickness for more dynamic strokes. When it comes to the 42 colored textures, they're divided into two sections. First you have the El Malo color palette. This palette features primary and secondary colors, along with both brighter and darker tones, all handpicked to resonate with the vibrancy of Latin American festivities and joy. Then you have the El Malo Skin Tones, a curated selection of colors that work beautifully for depicting human subjects or earthy terrains. If adding textures isn't your thing, but you still love the handpicked Central American colors, don't worry, the color palette of this DLC is the same as the color textures. They are organized into the same groups within your swatches panels in the Affinity interface, making it easy to access and use. Also, you can change the stroke that surrounds a texture with another brush type, whether it be part of the Amalo pack or your personal brushes. 
If you decide to acquire this pack, you can do so either through the official Frankentoon store or the main Affinity website. Just make sure it's not through Etsy. In the PDF guide, Frankentoon explicitly mentions we don't sell any products on Etsy. Any store open there infringes our copyrighted material. Any product purchased through Etsy doesn't contain a valid usage license. Speaking of licenses, I genuinely appreciate that once you purchase this product, you're free to use its assets for both commercial and non-commercial projects, with no limits on how many times you can download and utilize this DLC. This DLC is composed of 9 main files, 5.af brushes files, these are your brushes, 2.af styles files, these are your affinity layer styles, which influence the look of layers or shapes. Then you have 2.af palette files, these contain the two sets of color groups. When it comes to compatibility, the Enmalo illustration kit is fully compatible with affinity versions 1 and 2 for Windows, Mac, and iPad. Whether you're using Affinity Photo, Designer, or even Publisher to some extent, this kit works across the board, giving you creative flexibility no matter your platform. That said, I won't dive into a detailed installation instructions in this video as I like to focus on the features and creative possibilities of this DLC. However, if you're new to Affinity Designer or need guidance, I've included links to official tutorials and helpful resources in the description. If you would like a detailed installation guide for installing DLCs in the Affinity Suite, let me know in the comments below. In this review, We'll explore the Elmalo tools through three distinct projects, each with its own purpose and potential application. First, we'll develop a character, then design an advertisement, and finally create a scene. The goal of each project will highlight the raw, vibrant essence of the Elmalo aesthetic. As we dive into these projects, one key challenge will be figuring out how to adapt these tools to my workflow and illustration style. This process is much about experimenting as it is about discovering what works best for your unique artistic voice. Now, let's get to work. Lately, I have been feeling the urge to draw a chicken. At first, I wasn't sure which direction to take. A regular chicken, the chicken from Family Guy, or maybe that classic thumbs up chicken you find at the most clandestine rustisseries in Mexico. But then a peculiar idea came to me. A mariachi chicken singing a beautiful serenade under the moonlight. To capture that vibe, I used the tools from the El Malo, contrasting the cool tones of a night in a small Mexican town with the vibrant warmth of neon vermilion red and golden yellow. And to balance that out, I added a bluish hues of open sea and Caribbean blue. Now, when it came to the brushes, honestly, I did not know where to start. Big brushes, engravings, in the end, I decided to begin with the outlining brushes, then move on to the decorative ones and finish with the weight line brushes, tad in depth and texture. And speaking of texture, that's where everything came to life. Using colored textures was key to achieving that rustic, handcrafted finish. The best part is how the brushes and textures blend together, making the illustration feel authentic, vibrant, and full of character. What do you think? Does this chicken deserve his own Ranchera's album? I'm not gonna lie, the cover art for the El Malos DLC left me with an overwhelming urge to draw wrestlers. But not those polished, high production ones, rather the ones you find in Mexico, the ones who go all out with exaggerated suits and vibrant colors. So naturally, I ended up drawing the Lucha Libre poster, announcing the mortal showdown between a green Martian versus an anthropomorphic axolotl. El Malo's color palette made the whole process flow like water. The vibrant tones fit perfectly with the style of these posters, and even though I got carried away using a ton of colors, there is a balance between them. They contrast well both close and from a distance. And the best part is, whether you use light or dark tones, the DLC's textures always help tie everything together visually. For the brushes, I wanted to highlight the dot and decorative brushes because they give that raw, handcrafted touch so characteristic of Lucha Libre posters. Plus, the flexibility of these brushes is incredible. They adapt perfectly to outlines and respond very well to any adjustments. As for text, I had no trouble integrating it with the DLC's textures. I would have liked to add more color, 
but I also didn't want to oversaturate the poster. In the end, what mattered most was making sure that two main contenders stood out above everything else. So, who are you rooting for? Martian Joe or El Ajo Loco? Lately, I don't know why, but I have the melody of Hidden Village from The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess stuck in my head. Maybe because of the weather has been pretty dusty where I live, so naturally I ended up wanting to draw something from the Wild West. And what's more western than a cactus? A sheriff in a little dusty town. Well, I decided to combine them all into one illustration to see how the El Malo DLC adapts to this style. This time, I dared to step away from the vibrant colors that I usually go for and opted for more muted, earthy tones, which are characteristic of this kind of setting. El Malo's skin tone palette turned out to be perfect for this and the colors I used were mostly vivid blush, pale blush and apple green for the nameless cactus. As for the brushes, I mix singular outlining brushes with dotted shadow brushes. What I love most is how versatile they are in terms of thickness, making them ideal for both subtle details and more expressive strokes. They weren't just the key to adding texture and depth to the main subject, but they also helped to keep the background from feeling flat. It was a bit of a trial and error, but in the end, I was more than satisfied with the combination of brushes and earthly colors. But now the real question is, is this chair big enough for this town? After completing these illustrations and familiarizing myself with most of what this DLC has to offer, it is time to define the pros and cons. Pro, large variety of brushes. The sheer variety of brushes in this DLC is fantastic. Whether you're working on a current or future project, there's always a brush to help you bring your vision to life. Plus, since they're vector-based, you can scale them to any size without losing any quality. Con overwhelming selection. While the range of brushes is impressive, it can also be a bit overwhelming. With so many options, it's easy to feel like you're not using them to their full potential. Some brushes sometimes feel very specific, and if you're not working on texture strokes, you might not get around them anytime soon. Pro, vibrant color choices. The El Malo color palette is a winner. It strikes a perfect balance between bold, vibrant tones that bring out energy to your work, and more muted shades that offer an excellent contrast. These colors provide a great foundation for both modern and retro inspired designs. Con color precision. If you're after a very specific color like, I don't know, pistachio green, you might need to tweak it in the layer effects panel. While this is a minor inconvenience, it could slow down your workflow if you're pressed on time. Pro helpful PDF guide. The included PDF guide is a great resource and neatly displays the brushes, helping you easily reference them while working on your designs. It's practical and always handy to have on hand. Con JPEG illustrations. Yeah, th this is just one small downside. The beautiful Frankentune illustrations come in a JPEG format. While the images are in high resolution and stunning, the JPEG compression can make them feel a little less crisp. This, along with the previous cons, are minor gripes and don't affect the immense amount of value this DLC has. As much as I would have loved the images to come in a PNG or PDF format, I'm thankful they're not in a WebP format. So, after weighing the pros and the cons, it's time to ask the real questions. Do you create or wish to create street art, Latin inspired art, and retro art? Can you picture yourself using these brushes and colors? And most importantly, do you have 24 bucks to spare in this brutal economy? Rest in peace, $1 McChicken. Gone, but never forgotten. If you answered yes to any of these, this DLC is definitely worth considering. Before you go all in, here are some tips that may help you get the most out of this DLC. Number one, keep the guide handy. Having the brush and color guide within reach will help you quickly explore your options and make the design process smoother. Number two, use the scale with object feature. Don't forget to toggle the scale with object option in the strokes panel. This ensures your brush strokes won't get distorted when resizing your work. Number three, have fun and stay hydrated. It's easy to get caught up in the creative flow, but remember to take breaks and stay hydrated. Creativity thrives when you're feeling good. Why did I put this down here? Number four, 
creating custom colors. Want to craft a specific color for your texture? Start with a white cool gray or choose a color that is close to your desired shade. Then use the layer effects panel to add a color overlay. Change the color black to your desired color and then tweak the opacity and blend mode. And once you're happy, reproduce the texture color with the style picker tool to use across other layers that share the similar color. Number five, experiment with layered copies. When testing out different strokes and brushes, make layered copies of your subject. This way you can compare and contrast different looks to find what works best for you. Overall, I absolutely adore almost every aspect of this DLC. Each brush carries its own distinct personality, and once you kind of get the hang of them, you unlock new creative possibilities. The colors and textures are more than enough to set the mood for any project. From exotic to western vibes, there's virtually no limit to how you can integrate these colors into your projects. Plus, with a bit of tweaking, you can create new colors to match your vision. While I recommend sticking with the base colors, it's nice to know the option to experiment is there. Now, I hope I don't make you cringe when I say this, but this DLC is easy to use, but a little difficult to master. It's a blast to add random layers of colored textures and strokes, but if you take a closer look at Frankentoon's included illustrations, you'll notice there's a learning curve to these tools. With some practice, you'll learn how to apply specific brushes in certain scenarios and maintain balance of detail between your strokes, shapes, and textures. But don't worry, this DLC doesn't punish you for experimenting. It actively encourages you to have fun and get creative. Now, let's talk value. For $24, you're getting 130 brushes, 42 textures, and custom borders, 42 swatches, and a helpful PDF guide, a total of 215 items. That's just 11 cents per piece. And if you catch it on sale, it often goes for $12 during seasonal discounts on the Affinity Web Store. You're getting an absolute steal at six cents per item. Final rating, 9.9 .9 cloudy stars out of 10. I really can't find any flaws with this illustration kit aside from the gorgeous illustrations formatted in JPEGs. This DLC is a perfect for anyone looking to explore a new style, have fun creating, or even those ready to ditch Adobe Illustrator and dive into Affinity Photo or Designer. Screw you, Adobe. Not you, CS6. You're still cool. If you enjoyed this video and wish to see more like it, drop a like, comment something funny, and do subscribe. I have been wanting to do something like this for quite some time. I just lack the courage to do it. One day I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it. It could be good could be bad hey but it can't exist before you go if you're feeling inspired and want to see your barrio inspired artwork featured in the next review using this video's dlc just send it my way through any of my socials using the hashtag el malo and while you're at it don't forget to follow me so we can keep creating together with that being said thank you for your time and finish your Contigo. Tengo una gran idea. Ahora Dexter y Domino's Pizza presentan los Domino's Lana. Recórtalos de las cajas y júntalos. Tengo el dominio del tiempo y la música. Cambia tus Domino's Lana por los relojes y el portacidis de Dexter. ¡Qué gran invento, no!